Hi Scorpio, Happy New Year. Welcome to January 2018. This is Teresa from com, and I'm getting ready to do your reading for January. Um, and first I want to call in some good energy for the new year and for this reading. And I want to say thank you for liking and subscribing to my channel. Thank you for commenting. Um, and also thank you for, um, for those of you who have um, purchased readings. I thank you for your support. I've enjoyed working with all of you. So let's see what's happening. We've got a full moon in Cancer on January 1st, a new moon in Capricorn on the 16th, and then a full moon eclipse on the 31st in Leo. So there's a lot going on this month. A lot of um, endings and new beginnings. A lot of sh uh, these eclipse, this, the eclipse energy can shake things up a little bit, get us on the right track. It's about releasing what no longer serves and moving towards a more authentic path. So let's see what, what the cards say for Scorpio. What does Scorpio need to know about love and relationships for the month of January 2018? What do Scorpios need to know about love and relationships for January 2018? The Devil, the Two of Swords, the Five of Cups, the Five of Swords, the Sun, the Five of Pentacles, the Hierophant, Five of Wands, we've got all the fives here, the Nine of Cups, that's really right, and the Nine of Pentacles. Okay, so... You've got five fives in this reading. So there's a little bit of instability, but the outcome is positive. Um, you're starting out with the devil. The devil and the two of swords. So there's a relationship that you feel where you feel a strong attraction, or it's almost like a compelling, um, passionate... Um, there's, there's a lot of chemistry that's drawing you toward this relationship. And it may not even be, um, it may not be that healthy or um, that you could be attracted to someone who's got either a drinking or a drug problem or it could just be a, a, a relationship where there's codependency, where you're just, you're just drawn to this relationship for good or bad. You just can't seem to break away. There's just this pull that keeps dra drawing you back in and you're feeling... Um, a part of you can feel overwhelmed by your feelings, like your emotions are very strong around the, the, the sharing. The emotions in the relationship are um, very powerful. Um, there's a lot of um, strong desire, strong attachment. Um, it may not even be, it may have some limitations. It may not be a healthy attachment, but you, for some reason you can't break away. And you may have had some type of... Um, misunderstanding or falling out because you're having the two I feel like there's an estrangement like you're not talking to this person with the two of swords here you're, you're there it's like you've had some kind of falling out and each person's waiting for the other person to break the ice and make the first move toward reconciliation um, and you don't want to contact them. You're waiting for them to contact you. And so you're on the fence trying to decide what to do about this person. Because the Two of Swords is, is a decision time. It's a time of choosing between two paths. And um, things are kind of... There's a lot of unstable energy. Fives re represent instability. Um, and you have all the fives here. So there's a lot of... Um, uncertainty in this relationship. You're not sure what direction you want to go with it. You're not sure. Um, I mean, a part of you is you have some regrets because you have the five of cups here. So there's a sense of regret or a sense of loss connected with this relationship. And you're focusing on your losses. You're focused, you're healing from the past, focusing on the past and what you've lost in the past, 
the, the hurt that you felt. You might have been dealing with someone who can at times be very difficult and maybe even hostile because this is a card of hostility or feeling victimized. You might feel victimized by someone. Um, sometimes you think about the relationship and you feel like you wish you had handled things differently. There's a sense of regret um, of the way things went down. So maybe like the last interaction was not a, a, a nice one. There might have been words spoken or um, you may have felt like you're fighting a losing battle. Because this, this is a card of limitation. It's a card of someone that you, you understand that this relationship has limitations. And yet at the same time, you still care about this person in spite of the limitations. And so you have to kind of decide, can I live with this person with these limitations? Because they're not going to change. Um, and if I try to fight with them, you know, they might be trying to draw you into some type of drama. And if you respond to the drama, you're going to get, you know, you're both going to get hurt. So you kind of almost have to not play the game, not get caught up in the drama. There could be manipulation or um, where they're trying to push your buttons or they're trying to say things that cause a reaction. And um, if you've had a falling out, one of you or maybe both of you is having some regret. Um... But this influence is kind of passing. I'm feeling that, you know, you might have had some kind of interaction in the past that led to, you know, words being said, hostility, anger. Um, and now you're both regretting what happened. And But neither one is willing to make the move. Like, you both are um, kind of on the fence. Like, I don't, I don't want to call her. I don't want to. You know, it's like you don't want to call the person. They don't want to call you. Um, each person's waiting. For, like, you have, there's a lot of pride. And each person's waiting for the other person to make the move. But at some point, you're going to have to... If You're going to have to break the ice. Someone's going to have to break the ice and make contact. And at that point, you're going to have to really be honest with the person and sit down and say, this is what I need in a relationship. This is what I expect and you need to ask them what do your what what is your take on it you know you have to kind of lay your cards on the table so that you know the truth and say this is what i want and this is you know what i haven't been getting this is what i need what are you looking for you know so that you can come to some kind of so that there's no guessing games so you're not like hoping they'll read your mind or hoping they'll know what you want or what you need you have to spell it out and they're either willing to deliver or they're not um, so at some point, you might have to decide, hey, I can't live with this person the way they are. I, I'm tired of playing, of doing this dance. I'm going to cut my losses and move on. Um, now, you do have the sun in the reading. So the sun, I mean, when you do get together and things are good, when things are good, they're very good. You have a lot of fun together. You see, I, you're like two kids enjoying each other. Um, but then when the limitations pop up, <laughs> um, you know, I mean, this person has a dark side. There, there's a dark side to this connection. Um, that's causing pain to both people. Um, so you kind of like love each other. It's like a love-hate thing. Like you love each other, you hurt each other, you love each other. Um, and this time, one of you is feeling lonely and cut off from the other. Like this, there might be someone who's going through a depression or going through a difficult time financially and needs help. They're, they're, they're really needing someone to be there for them. They're feeling lonely, they're feeling um, depressed, and they're feeling maybe even not good enough to approach you. Um, and you may feel like you want to take care of them. They may come to you for assistance, and you may feel like you need to help them out, because this is coming up in the future, um, where if you look at this card, it's this person who's taking care of this person who's been wounded by life. Um, they may even have a head injury, or they, they might be a soldier, that you know, post-traumatic stress coming home from battle, uh, they may have been abused in their past. You know, maybe the Five of Swords represents abuse, past 
abuse. And so they're struggling, they're suffering, and you're wanting to help them and relieve their suffering. Um, so they, so they may eventually come to you for assistance. The five, uh, the hierophant here. You're looking for a relationship. You want a relationship that lasts. You want a traditional relationship. Um, so you're kind of conflicted about what you're really wanting. You want to do the right thing. Um, you want to help the person, but at the same time, um, you want more from a relationship. So you're kind of on the fence. And you feel like you're fighting. Like this person is feeling like we're always fighting over these petty things. Like, so they're in conflict too. Like they care, but then they're not sure if they want to get back in the relationship because they're tired of fighting. Um, but they might still contact you anyway because they need help. They need someone to be there for them. They're going through a depression, they're feeling. And you're the person that can help them. You're the person that can make them feel wanted and loved and cared for. Um, so you have this Nine of Cups here. I feel like that, I don't feel like the relationship is totally over. I feel like it has some problems, but I think you can overcome them with the sun. And you can get back together. If you've broken up with someone, you can get back together. Um... But the relationship will always have, there's like, there are some issues that you're just going to have to accept. There's some things about this relationship and this, it has some limitations and you're going to have to accept that. And if you can't accept it, then you have to cut your losses and move on. That's what this card's about. But I feel like a part of you doesn't want to cut your losses because you care about the person. So you want, you're willing to keep trying to make it work. And you're wanting to build more stability. You're wanting to give. This is a card of teaching, of sharing your wisdom. You want to really help the person and give them guidance and advice. But they're they're they have some issues. They have some problems, and they're going to need a lot of care and a lot of work. Um, the Nine of Pentacles. This could represent you. You have the means to help this person. You have the money. You have. Um, so you might be surrounded, you might be having some type of material financial success. You might be living in a nice home and you have material um, stability, but you're feeling lonely and you really want to be connected with someone. Maybe that's why you keep coming back to this person because there's no one else around at the time. And, you know, this person comes up and you really feel, you want to feel needed. You want to feel loved. You want to feel like there's someone in your life. So this person keeps coming back, but the, but it's kind of an unstable situation. Um, so I think that in January you're going to be helping someone get over um, a difficult time financially. They may come to you for help. They may not have money for bare, you know, the bare essentials, and you might be helping them over a rough time, either getting through a depression or getting through a feeling of isolation. Um, where they just want to be around, they, they want to be with someone that they know cares for them. And so with the Sun and the Nine of Cups, I think that you can kind of work things out, but you're going to have to be honest about what you need. You're going to have to be honest about how you feel and how much you can give and what you are expecting from the relationship. So let's see um, with the Full Moon in Cancer. The Full Moon in Cancer is affecting your ninth and third house. So this is the house... These are communication houses. So there could be someone who's at a distance from you. Um, and the communication at this time, you might be communicating with someone that you you see as a brother, or because the third house is the house of relatives. You know, siblings, aunts, uncles, um, neighbors. So you might be having some difficult conversations with either siblings or neighbors or relatives. Uh, maybe some people from a distance. Um, you might be hosting, you know, dealing with people from a foreign country or or people who are different than you, different culture. Um, sometimes the nine of the nine ninth house has to do with higher education, teaching, learning. So you might be mentoring someone. Um, you have Jupiter and Mars in your first house, so that's giving you energy. You want to put your energy out there. 
And Neptune in your fifth, this is the thing, uh, that kind of fits in with this energy of taking care of someone who has a problem. So you might be attracting, you know, someone who is a drain on your energy. And you want to be careful that you're seeing them in a realistic light. That you're not just glamorizing, you know, you might be idealizing someone and saying, oh, you poor thing. And they might be just playing the victim and just sucking you dry like a vampire. So you want to be sure that you're giving your energy in the, in, you know, to the person who deserves it. And you don't want to be used. You don't want to be victimized by someone with their sob story. Um, because it's very easy for you to fall into that trap of being the victim or, or being the, um, you know, the savior. You know, getting into that savior type relationship where you're saving someone who, who needs help. Um, but, and then thinking that you're going to make something, you're going to change them because you're not going to change them. You might be there for them to offer support, but you want to be, you know, realistic about how much you can do for this person because, you know, they are who they are and you're not going to change their basic nature. So help, but also learn where to, how to set boundaries. Um, then the new moon um, will happen in your third. So you could have a new beginning with a relative. You know, maybe you have a conversation and you work things out. Um, I feel like um, that you could have a new beginning where you have better relationships with relatives or a brother or a sister. And you're learning how to communicate. You're learning how to get your needs met. You're learning how to have healthy conversations. So um, the new moon in Capricorn um, can be a good one for you for, for establishing um, healthier relationships with relatives and neighbors and siblings. And then the full moon in Leo happens in your 10th house, this eclipse. 10th house and the 4th fourth, fourth house. So you could be having um, some career success at the end of the month where... Um, you're moving up into a new position or some, some sudden development happens in your career that out of the blue because eclipses, you know, speed up your timeline. So if you were thinking that you had all this time in the world to create, to do this project, you may have to get it done, you know, ahead of time. Or there could be an opportunity that you have to either take and, you know, if you were thinking of switching jobs, um, there's, there's like a surprise energy or a, a speeding up of the energy. So you might be leaving one job for another job quickly, uh, or you might just get a sudden promotion uh, because you're feeling, you know, Jupiter's in your first house. It's giving you luck. It's giving you um, the feeling of of um, expansion. You want to expand your horizons. You want to go after things. You have more optimism that you feel like you can achieve. You can take on more. You can achieve more. Um, so the only thing you have to watch out for, so I think career wise, I think you're doing okay. As far as career goes, I think you're, um, you may have some positive happenings in your career sector, but the only thing you have to watch out for is the relationship sector that you're not being, um, sucked into a kind of like a codependent type of relationship where someone's needing your help and kind of like, um, draining you. Because you're giving and giving and giving, but they may not have the capacity to give back. Um, so it's kind of like a mixed... Uh, things are changing in January. But I think they're going to be changing for the better in terms of career. Because I see you working with more um, autonomy. Maybe you're working for yourself. You decide to start your own business. Or maybe you're working more independently where people just give you work and they let you do it. And you don't have to answer to anyone. Um, as much, you know, they kind of give you free reign. So on the one hand, you're going to have, I think you're going to enjoy your career. Um, there's going to be opportunities coming up with the eclipses. Um, and you may have better relations, smoother relations, uh, easier f communication with a, with your neighbors, relatives, siblings. Um, the only thing you need to be careful about is romance. Um, and if you have children, because Neptune's in the fifth house. So the best way to use Neptune in the fifth house is through creativity so, and self-expression. So if you feel like painting or writing or writing poetry or doing something, um, even if it's just crafts, arts and crafts, 
um, music, anything like that that has to do with the arts, um, it will help you uh, move away from the Neptune, the deception aspect of Neptune. Because with Neptune, sometimes you um, you tend to idealize lovers and the people that you love. You, you put them on a pedestal and they may not deserve that. They may not be worthy of your love. So you want to be careful that you're not giving too much to someone who's not valuing you or appreciating what you're giving. Um, I mean, it's okay to help someone who needs help, but don't let them suck you dry. Don't let them suck your energy. You have to learn how to set boundaries. Um, someone may play the poor me victim, and you may feel sorry for them, and you want to help them, and then they you, they draw you in to this drama. Because with this devil card and the fi all these fives, um, you don't want to be drawn into someone's drama. You want to help them but not create dependency. Don't let them become dependent on you. So that's my message for Scorpios for um, January. I wish you a happy new year, and I hope this reading was a help to you. And I wish you luck and love and all good things. And I will talk to you again in February. Okay, bye now.